recommended cholesterol levels to prevent coronary heart disease so first of all let us see the lipids in the diet so two important uh, lipids in the diet are the cholesterol and another one is the fatty acids this cholesterol is going to be absorbed into the systemic circulation as the cholesterol esters it is going to be esterified which is then going to be absorbed into the systemic circulation and fatty acids can react with the glycerol and they can be converted into triglycerides now this cholesterol esters and triglycerides are going to be absorbed into the systemic circulation so among these the cholesterol is very important in producing the coronary heart disease so in this video let us see what are the recommended levels of the cholesterol and the triglycerides to be maintained to prevent the coronary heart disease good and bad cholesterol we know that the cholesterol can be called as good and bad cholesterol so within the diet the cholesterol is the important uh, lipid which is going to be absorbed into the systemic circulation where this cholesterol is going to be transported within the body by few of the proteins we call lipoproteins so the first lipoprotein which is going to be responsible for the distribution of the cholesterol after its absorption is the chylomicrons so chylomicrons are going to transport the cholesterol from the point of absorption to the other parts of the systemic circulation and another lipoprotein is the vldl vldl can transport both the cholesterol as well as the triglycerides we can observe that uh, vldl is rich in the triglycerides compared with the cholesterol and another lipoprotein is the ldl ldl is only rich in the cholesterol it is not having the significant amounts of the triglycerides and finally another lipoprotein is the hdl which is also rich in the cholesterol and these lipoproteins are classified based on their density for example ldl is the low density lipoprotein hdl is the high density lipoprotein and vldl is the very low density lipoprotein and here we can observe that ldl lipoprotein is rich in the cholesterol only so this cholesterol is responsible for the the development of the atherosclerosis so this cholesterol is called as bad cholesterol similarly the cholesterol which is bound with the hdl lipoprotein is called as good cholesterol as it prevents the formation of atherosclerosis now ldl cholesterol which is called as a bad cholesterol is mainly responsible for the atherosclerosis this ldl cholesterol when it is raised within the blood it can be oxidized such that it can form the foam cells these foam cells can further initiate the various reactions like the coagulation cascade activation of the platelets and release of the inflammatory mediators all these can cause a formation of a plaque what we call atheroma atheroma is a fibrous plaque that is going to be formed within the intima of the blood vessel now this atheroma causes atherosclerosis that is a narrowing of the blood vessel because of the blocking of the blood vessel that's why ldl cholesterol is called as bad cholesterol so either increase in the ldl or decrease in the hdl where the hdl is called as a good cholesterol so either increase in the bad cholesterol or decrease in the good cholesterol levels can induce the atherosclerosis so what is the goal of treatment so main goal of treatment is to decrease the ldl which is called as bad cholesterol and to increase the hdl which is called as good cholesterol then what about the triglycerides triglycerides also represent some part of this cholesterol and actually they are responsible for the 20% of the total cholesterol levels in the body so we have to decrease the triglycerides also which further reduces the risk of the chd in the patients now let us see what are the ldl levels and what is the risk of the coronary heart disease ldl levels when they are less than 100 mg per deciliter they are called as optimal levels and when their levels are 100 to 129 they are called as above optimal so in such a range we have to control the lipid intake so when the levels are 130 to 159 they are called as borderline high and when the levels are 130 to 159 along with the diet control we have to go for the lifestyle modifications like exercise reducing the other risk factors which can reduce the development of the chd and when the levels are 160 to 189 the levels are called as high here the patient has to start the drug therapy 
and finally when the levels are greater than 190 mg per deciliter they are called as very high and here a monotherapy is not sufficient to control the LDL levels a multiple drug therapy can be given to control the LDL levels in a optimal range and you can easily observe that all these are going to having a difference of 30 less than 100 is optimal 100 is above optimal and 130 is borderline high 160 is high and 190 is very high you can easily remember they differ by 30 and how these LDL level should be maintained so if a patient is having the lower risk for the CHT, for example, the patient is having no risk factors or having one risk factors like either hypertension or diabetes or any of these risk factors, it is sufficient to maintain the levels less than 160 to prevent the risk of CHT. But when the patient is having the medium risk for the CHT, for example, the patient is having the two or more risk factors, for example, a patient is having both hypertension as well as diabetes otherwise diabetes as well as obesity or any other two risk factors then the level should be maintained very strictly less than 130 and when the patient is having the high risk such as more number of risk factors as well as family history for cardiovascular disorders and other types of risk factors then the level should be maintained less than 100 to prevent the coronary heart disease in this way, the optimal LDL level to be maintained depends on the associated risk factors within the patient. The optimal levels are variable from the patient to patient and all depends on the how many risk factors are there with the patient. Now let us see the HDL levels and risk of CHD. HDL is also called as good cholesterol. So when the HDL levels are less than 40, it is called as low and when they are greater than 60 they are called as high because HDL is a good cholesterol we have to maintain a sufficient amount of the HDL so the goal of treatment is always to maintain the HDL levels greater than 40 mg per deciliter and it is always desirable to achieve the HDL levels nearer to the 60 and when the HDL levels are above 60 they decrease the further risk of the CHD because they prevent the atherosclerosis VLDL levels and risk of CHD. So already we have seen VLDL is rich in the triglycerides which and triglycerides are also responsible for the 20% of the total cholesterol. So when the levels are less than 150 mg per dl they are called as normal and 150 to 199 they are borderline high and 200 to 499 they are high and greater than 500 they are very high. So VLDA levels should be again strictly controlled in order to prevent the risk of the CHD. So when the patient is having only elevated VLDA levels with normal LDL levels, it is sufficient to maintain the VLDA levels less than 200 as above 200 they indicates the high levels of the VLDL. But if the patient is having the raised LDL levels as well as the raised VLDL levels, there is more risk for the CHD. So the VLDA level should be maintained less than 150. Again, the optimal levels of VLDL depends on whether the patient is having the normal LDL cholesterol or raised LDL cholesterol. Now let us see the total cholesterol levels. Total cholesterol is a combination of LDL, HDL as well as the VLDL. But here VLDL represents only 20% of the total cholesterol. Total cholesterol levels when they are less than 200 mg per dl they are called desirable and 200 to 239 borderline high and greater than 240 they are high as the total cholesterol indicates both ldl and hdl it is always better to maintain the total cholesterol levels less than 200 in order to prevent the coronary heart disease in this way how these cholesterol levels are maintained depends on the patient conditions if the patient is having less risk factor for the generation of the atherosclerosis, the optimal levels are uh, like less than 160 mg per dl for LDL. But when they are having two or more risk factors, the level should be maintained less than 130 mg per dl. When they are having high risk, their level should be maintained less than 100 mg per dl. In order to prevent the risk of the CHD, optimal levels for a patient should be checked based on the various risk factors associated with the patient. So that's about the recommended levels of cholesterol and VLDL levels to prevent the atherosclerosis.